My name is Byron Franklin. Some years ago, while I was teaching at Officers Candidate School, the USS Intrepid, that's now a monument in New York, came into Newport Harbor. When she came into Newport Harbor, there was a heavy fog. She was to go up to the piers where the governor, admirals, a lot of high-ranking dignitaries were to welcome her. Since it was fog, she probably should not even try to enter. But because of all the news and publicity about her coming in on that day at that time, she continued up the harbor, Newport Harbor, in Narragansett Bay towards her pier. What happened was on the way up she ran aground. The situation was there were a lot of boats and it confused the radar uh, people so that they didn't get fixes. The visual people didn't get fixes because of the heavy fog. So running aground is a horrible thing for an aircraft carrier, especially under these conditions. So what I want to do is talk to you about something that happened after. I was told that um, she had run aground and I was transferred to the USS Intrepid uh, as a navigation quartermaster, a master chief quartermaster, and the idea was, was there anything that I could have done to have kept her from coming aground? So in those days, I figured out two radar techniques, one called the special, which is already on YouTube and Facebook, and the other one called the Franklin Continuous Radar Plot. Now the Franklin Continuous Radar Plot uh, was made because so many uh, vessels were confused in this situation. I figured if you could get one conspicuous target and use that target to travel upon that uh, things would be safe or safer never safe. So let me go into the Franklin um, continuous radar plot to show you how it works and how you prepare the radar scope for the continuous. First of all I want to show you in the book the continuous plot. It could be read and uh, interpreted to be used out of the book. It is being taught in schools, civilian schools, uh, but the idea is very simple. I could use this to explain some of it, but I'll go into more detail. The idea is you always put down a DR when coming into a port, especially coming into a port. So the DR is this with all the turns that are necessary. A conspicuous navigation uh, target is picked and bearing and ranges to that target is made at each turning point and any place you desire to make them. The end result is on the scope you get this picture. So as you come up from T1 to T2 the target travels from T1 to T2 
If you take a left hand turn, it also will take a left hand turn. So in the direction of travel, right is to the right and left is to the left. If you were to walk over to this side of the scope, then everything would be as it should be. But you don't need to do that. You can stay over on this side and realize when you're right or left of each one of the turns or straight lines. So let me go into it a little more in detail how you do it. The first thing you do, as you would always do coming into port, especially on a large ship, is to draw the uh, DR, dead reckoning, lines on the chart. Now we want to come into this port of Narragansett. We want to pass the old light ship to port, continue to B3, continue on in safe waters to B4, and during this period of time we'll use the light here as our nav aid uh, pip on the scope. So when we get to B4, we change course again and go up to the bridge. Now during this period of time, we drop this, the light ship, we pick up Rose Island and use Rose Island to come up here. Then when we get here, under the bridge, we pick up the breakwater at the piers that we want to go to, and we take bearings and ranges to that pier from the bridge to W2 and W3 alongside the pier. Now, that's what you would normally do anyway, is to make these segments and these DRs. So let's go in a little closer and talk more about it. This is the first segment using the light ship. So all we do is take a bearing from our starting point B1 to the light ship. B3, a bearing and range to the light ship. We turn at this point and we take a bearing and range to the light ship once again. So we just note them on a piece of paper such as this. The bearings and ranges. So now we have those bearings and ranges. So then when we pick up Rose Island, we do the same thing. We take a bearing from the point at Rose Island and the range. A bearing to the next turn and the range. Then the breakwater, the bearing, range, and so on. Now here's the easy part. That was easy enough, but now this is the scope. So what we do with the scope is put each one of those bearings and ranges on the scope, one at a time. So we put in the first reading of B1, which is 317, 1,700 yards, and we mark it on the scope. So that's B1. The next one we mark on the scope, bearing and range. We mark the next one on the scope, bearing and range. The next one on the scope, bearing and range. 
So then all we do is take a grease pencil and draw a line through those marks. So then we continue on by, this is before we even get to port, of course, out at sea coming in. We next go to Rose Island. We put down the bearing and range for Rose Island, which is R4. The bearing and range for Rose Island, R5. Realizing now that we're under the bridge, we now pick up the breakwater at B1, bearing and range, and bearing and range. All we do is draw the grease pencil line in to each of them. So now we have prepared the scope entirely for this transit. So what should happen and what will happen is when we get to B1 heading towards B2 on the scope you will see the light ship pip go from B1 to 2. Now if you are to the right of it over here, you will be to the right. As you approach B2, you're at the right still. You can take a little course change to the left, mark your back on the line. You can then travel down to B3. Take the turn to B4. All of this will be on the scope as you are traveling on the chart. So it's a simple process and direction is easy because you'll always go pick up B1. If you're on track you'll stay right on the line. On the Intrepid, we had an extra radar, and we did have extra personnel. So what I could do is just put one man uh, on this, and with a telephone to the plotter, and he could tell me, right or left, uh, approaching the uh, turn, uh, he could give me information that was time of occurrence information where the radar scope plot would be after you left that point because it takes a little while to take the bearings or take radar ranges. So he would be the most up-to-date information. If we were to the right of the track, come to the left of the track, then he would be the first one to tell me. Now, the only thing is, is accuracy. Ranges on a radar scope are very accurate. Bearings are not as accurate, but you can ensure yourself of where you are and how well your, rain, your bearings are. So therefore the end fix by Let's say if you're coming in port, you could take a bearing of some object, another ship, and a radar bearing, and compare them to see that you're pretty close. Or if you're leaving the pier, uh, such as we're at W1, uh, excuse me, W2 leaving the pier, uh, you can uh, take bearings of something around there and radar ranges to see that your scope is accurate. Or if you're passing a buoy, you can mark it. Or you can even take fixes while you're using the Franklin continuous plot. Of course the same thing could be used, the uh, continuous plot offshore with one 
with land mass on just one side or a target of some form on one side, charted target.